How are you doing? Let me just turn the reverb off on my voice so I don't sound like I'm in a cavern here. There we go. And on this one, two. Perfect. One, two. Testing one, two. Bring this up a little bit. This is great. So I'm back today with another lesson. So last week we did Horse with No Name. You can watch that on repeat if you missed it. That was a great song to start with, I thought, because with these lessons, I want to teach songs that are both accessible to brand new players and beginners and also advanced players as well. And I think that's what I'm doing here. So last week's song was so accessible because it was just two chord shapes that were very easy and didn't require any string muting or anything like that, but still a classic song that people will know and sing along to. This week's song is more complex. For a start, there's four chords in this song. But the great news is these chords are so common that if you learn this song, if you master this song, you can play probably thousands of other songs and write your own songs as well. So this is definitely worth the practice. Um, say hi to our friends in the chat, first of all. And my question for you then is this. This is an important question. Did you practice the song last week? Did you practice Horse With No Name? Because I think this is, this is the reveal, isn't it? about the whole music thing. Remember today it's really focused on the song and not on the gear. I know I focus on the gear a lot and I enjoy that. But today is focusing on the playing, the practicing, the, the, the repertoire and the songs and how we play them at a show. So my question to you today to start with is, did you practice, in all honesty, the song we learned last week? Did you practice it? Did you find something new? If you could already play it, did you find a new way to do something you can share? I know that Lewis was practicing. Lewis did a great thing. He filmed himself playing the song and posted it on his YouTube channel and he got a lot of views from it as well. And that's a great way to learn because he's able to listen back and hear how he sounds, which is really important. Uh, David says, good morning, everyone in the chat. Blue skies in Oregon, very nice. Marianne is here. Hi, Mar Marianne. Jim, maple tree sap is flowing in Vermont. It's 45 degrees, awesome. Patsy's here. Hi, Patsy. Where's the fire? Hi, Aaron. Hope you're well. Watched your Mark Museum video. Really enjoyed it all. I watched a comparison. John Mayer had a marginally better ring on those strings. Uh, where's the fire? Join us on Monday at 4 p.m. I'm going to go into real detail. I'm going to call Monday's show what really happened at the museum because there's a lot of stuff that you didn't see on that live stream. Lewis is ready. Got your guitar in hand. S. Willis is here. Marco's here. Marco, this isn't Stand By Me by Oasis, sadly. This is the Ben E. King version, the classic song. Lewis is ready. This is everything. Happy, happy love day. Yeah, this is our song for Valentine. You can pl learn, play this your Valentine on Monday. Then you haven't got to go out and buy a gift for them. Just kidding, you should do that as well. And Jim said, yes, I practiced last week's lesson. Great, well, let me know how you got on with that. Let me know if, what you found useful, what you didn't. Let me know, um, yeah, let me know how you found that song. I mean, I'd never played that song before, so it was great for me to do that. Let's go right into this today. The first thing we're going to do is tune the guitar. There's nothing worse than practicing a song or playing a song when your guitar is out of tune. Marco's going to play Oasis one. Well, Marco, some of the chords are the same, but this, you're going to be playing a different song if you do that. Um, I'm going to grab my tuner. I recommend everyone buys a tuner. Today I'm using the clip-on tuner because the other tuner that I like, the desktop one, is in the bag from Monday's session. So I'm going to tune the guitar and please tune along with me so we're all in tune together. Here is the high E string, the thinnest string on the guitar. 
So if you don't have a tuner, just make sure your high E string sounds the same as that one. That's an E. The next string down is your B string. Slightly sharp here. If you find yourself sharp, tune down and then tune up. And the reason is, otherwise the string can slip. If you only have a tune down, because you're starting to tune the string down, it can then fall down, if you like. Whereas if you go below the note and then bring it up to pitch, there's more tension there, it's less likely to go out of tune. So there's your B string, that should sound like that. Here's the G string. Here's the D string. Here's your A string. If you have a tuner, I'd rather use the tuner, but it's good to practice tuning by ear. Maybe practice tuning it by ear and then check with your tuner. It's a great way to do it. And the low E, the lowest, thickest string. So the low E and the high E are both E's. The high E is an octave higher. Well, actually, two octaves. So if you play a, uh, all the strings open, they should sound like this. A G chord. Okay, I really want you to buy a good tuner. I want you to buy the Peterson Strobo Clip HD and always tune before you play. And you don't have to, but if, if I had my way, everyone would do that. Because Lewis says, Do you always practice? Or do you always check for tuning before you practice? Yes. Because there's no point playing anything on the guitar if your guitar's out of tune. There really isn't. And you could play incredibly well and be out of tune, and it just sounds terrible. And you can play decently, it perfectly in tune, and it sounds very good. Let me show you an example of that. So I'm, I'm in perfect tuning there, right? So I'm going to play something very simple. Because it's so in tune, it sounds professional, it doesn't offend my ears. Even if I just strum on one chord. I feel, I feel fine listening to that. Now let me put it out of tune. Now I'm going to do the same thing. Now we play something more advanced but out of tune. So that's a bit drastically out of tune, but I'm, I'm playing bar chords, I'm playing twice as many chords, I'm still in time, but because I'm out of tune, even slightly out of tune, right? It doesn't matter what I play, I could even play... Something that sounds really good does not sound good out of tune. That's a very drastic um, um, demo that I'm giving you there. But just trust me, like you go to enough kind of music nights, I might sound a bit condescending now, I don't mean to be, but if you go to enough kind of jam nights and open mic nights and you hear a guitar slide slightly out of tune, and I don't mean people don't know how to tune it, I'm not being rude. Let's say you have a guitar that has a slight problem, or let's say that you just forgot to tune it, and I've done it too, I've played plenty of songs out of tune, but it's just not good. If you walk into a room and that guitar is slightly out, that can really break a performance, I feel. Now, some people will argue that it's better when it's slightly out of tune. Like, the old Rolling Stones tunes were slightly out of tune. That's a whole new argument there, but... I just think it's a really, really strong, positive habit to get into.
and it's so quick. These strobe tuners, tuners are so fast. You clip it on, you go through the street, you're done. You're ready to go. You're ready to play. And I think that's really important. Of course, the other thing that's very important is playing in time. Getting that groove. And now, especially with a song like Stand By Me. Stand By Me is all about the groove, right? It's all about this. Because what happens when you, when you play like that? You tap your foot. You move, right? Because it's all about that. It's all about that, it just makes you tap your foot. Now if you are not in time, if you're not in perfect time, it, you're not gonna tap your foot and it makes such a big difference. The groove is something that I see people missing out on all the time. So if I play that, um, Yeah, this is really, I'm, I'm really over-exaggerating, but do you hear the difference between that? And this? See, I'm not faking that. Even I'm moving, right? I'm moving into the. It makes me want to move. And if it makes me want to move, it makes the audience want to move. Whereas what I did previously does not make the. It makes the audience want to move out of the front door to another location. <laughs> I'm being a bit over the top. I, I get like that when I teach. I apologize. I get very. I get very down to it. I get. I. I, I don't hold my words back when I teach guitar. All right, so anyway, that's some pointers that I want you to bear in mind while you're playing the song, especially if you're more advanced. But we need to go back now to the, for the beginners and work through the chords. So let's go to the lesson screen so you can see what I'm doing. Right, G major. Now, with these chords, there's, this, this is great. There's, there's no waste of time here. This chord appears in 60% of the songs that I play at a show. So you need to learn this chord. The only thing is with a chord like this is that there's, a, there's many ways of playing it, all right? So I've given you the way that I play it, but I just wanna show you a few things here. For, for example, when, when you see like the real beginner's books, you sometimes see people say, take your ring finger on the thinnest string, the E string on the third fret. Remember, always try to fret the note as close as you can to the metal fret itself there and push down on it. And they say, just play the top four strings. Now you can do that, that's a G, and that's because that removes the other two strings, which is harder to play, right? Which you do like this. But of course, eventually you have to do that because you can't just always strum like this forever because you're missing that low G note on the bass. And you need that, right? You need that. So I want you to learn this chord. Now some people will play this chord with their middle finger on the third fret of the low E string, their second finger, or pointer finger, on the second fret of the A string, and then their ring finger on the thinner string, the high E string, and let all the strings ring out. And then some people will do what I've got in my picture, which is to put these two fingers on here. So you also get this, this uh, B string on the third fret as well. So little finger, pinky finger on the third fret of the E, ring finger on the third fret of the B, pointer finger on the second fret of the A, and middle finger on the third fret of the low E. And this is the sound I like. Listen to the sound of this. compared to the other way. So you can hear that, uh, it's ringing out. 
Now there's nothing wrong with that. And the thing with these chords is sometimes you'll want to use the other variation. So you might want to use this. I would say 90% of the time I play a G, I play it like this, the, the way in the picture there on the diagram. I also sometimes will mute the A string as well to get this G5 chord. So you take out the third of the chord. So that's, this is a bit over the top. You can just ignore all this and just focus on practicing the chord on the screen. I want you to do that. But I want to show you here um, for future reference, there are many ways of playing a chord. So I've got different ways at my disposal here. So I've got this way, which is on the screen. I've got this way, which gives me the third note, which is a bit more folky. I've got this way, which is what you call a G5. There's no third in the chord at all. It's very rocky and powerful. So there's three ways there of playing that chord. And I think it's good to know them all, but obviously if you're new to the guitar, that's a bit overwhelming. So I want you to just to focus on the chord on the screen because that's the one that I use most of the time. You've got your low G, this is the, the root note, it's called the root note, it tells you what the chord is. So it's a G. You've got your um, B here, which is the third of the chord, that tells you that it's major. Okay, that's major. Then you've got your D, which is your fifth. Your G, which is again the root. Your D, which is the fifth again. And your G, which is the root, tonic. So that's a very nice, full, powerful, obvious G major chord, all right? So I want you to practice this chord. And don't worry about the rhythm yet. Just practice that chord and make sure every single string rings out clearly. That means the ones you're pressing down on are doing this and not this. Right? You want to be pressing right before the fret with enough pressure that you get a clean sound. There should be no buzz at all and it should sustain. And then you want these open strings, which are indicated by the, uh, the white dots at the top there. That means the string is played open. They should also ring out perfectly with no buzzing. Because if you, if you accidentally touch the string with one of these fingers, it will buzz. You'll get this. Okay, so it should be very clean. Also, sometimes this bottom part of the hand will mute strings. That's what happens. You have to get just the right curvature here so there's nothing muting a string. And the way to test that is to do what I just did, play each one individually, like an arpeggio. You, can just, just, you don't need to know that word yet. Just play each string individually and make sure nothing is being choked. Okay, hi, Jazza. So check this out. So I want you to do that. I want you to do that and do that several times. I want you to then take your hand off completely and give a wave. And then what that's doing is, it's helping you remember how to get back to the chord. So fret the chord, play each string. If there's a buzz, play it again. Take your hand off, shake your hand out, come back, do that again. Again. You should, and you can do this while you watch the television. That's why like an electric guitar is good. It doesn't make any sound. So you can just sit and play, watch television and you can practice this. You don't need any sound apart from to hear if there's any buzzing, but you should be able to do this. So can you do that? And if you can't do that, then slow down and just practice getting that chord right. Okay, this stuff takes time, it doesn't just happen. But the ultimate goal here is to just focus on getting this G major chord so you can just play it. And it's absolutely perfect, right? Because what's important here is tuning, timing, and how clean you play because you also don't want to play in perfect tune in perfect time, but fret chords like this. Okay, you want to make sure every chord is clean. And yes, it will hurt. You do this for 20 minutes, your hand's going to get tired, you're going to get the calluses, 
but this is great practice. So there's your G. G major, major means happy, minor means sad. That's a very basic way of understanding it. So that's the first chord of Stand By Me. Now I should just say this, Stand By Me is originally in A, but A would require a bar chord. And I'm not ready to teach those to you yet. I wanna stick with open chords. So if you wanna play along to the recording, which by the way is probably slightly out of tune, I think. But if you wanna play along to the recording or someone else doing a cover or a lesson, you might need a capo. I like the G7th capos. And you might need that on the second fret, which raises it up a whole, a whole step. And then when you play that G, you're actually getting an A because A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So G goes to A. So it'd be the same thing, but you've got the capo. The capo acts as the nut. So the nut here is basically being replaced by the capo. So it moves it up two steps or one whole step, or if you're in the UK, two semitones or a tone. So you just get this sound. It sounds higher, it sounds brighter, right? And the capo is also great for singers because let's say this is too high. Actually, this key would be too high for me. When the night has come. So if I take the capo off, lowering it a whole step, it suits my voice better. When the night has come. Okay, brings it down a whole step. And likewise, maybe that's too low for you and you need it to be much higher. You could put the capo right up here on the seventh fret and make the, 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 the key much higher. So a capo and a tuner are very important things for, for a guitar, especially acoustic guitar. So that's the G major chord. And remember, that chord is in millions of songs. So this is not a waste of time because, you know, th that's the first chord in Brown Eyed Girl. That's the first chord in Wagon Wheel. That's the first chord in Blackbird. That's the first chord in um, uh, da, 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 <laughs> um, Time of Your Life. That's the first chord in, in um, well, that's the third chord in I Feel Fine. That's the first chord in I'm a Believer. So that, there's millions, I could do millions of songs. That chord is so important. You're gonna use it all the time. So it's not, none of this is a waste of time. So there we go, G major. We're gonna move on to our next chord now. Let me know if you've got any questions in the chat. Hopefully you got that one. Let's look at E minor. Now this is great. Remember what I said last week about none of this being a waste of time and I'm saying it again this week? Well, here's a prime example. E minor was in last week's lesson. So if you watched last week's lesson and if you practiced like Lewis did, you know this chord already. So the E minor was this from last week, remember? You've got your pointer finger on the second fret of the A string. You've got your middle finger on the second fret of the D string and you let every single string rule ring out get a really full rich sound so again do that test play each string separately take your hand off do it again take your hand off tap your leg do it again 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 from the top again 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 Okay, so I'm not gonna go over this chord too much. Now it's called E minor because it's minor, so minor is sad. This sounds sad, right? Happy would have a major third, which would sound like this. Can you hear that? Happy, happy, and then sad. That's happy, that's sad. So when you hear a chord on the radio, on the radio, when you hear a chord being played by someone in the bar, you're jamming or something, you can think to yourself, is that minor or major? And there's many other chords, but minor or major are the main ones. So if someone's playing a song, you can think, oh right, that sounds major. So he's, he's playing some kind of major chord. And then you, and you realize that the low note is an E, uh, E major. Or you hear this. Oh, that sounds sad. That must be something minor. The lowest note is an E. Oh, that's E minor. Okay. So E minor. We did this last week. 
and very straightforward. Make sure every single string uh, rings out. And this is my point. If next week we do a song with these chords again, you already know the chords. You just got to learn the new rhythm. So that's really great. Let's move on to the next chord. Now these two might be a bit more challenging. And I'll show you why. I need some more water before we do these. Shake your hand. If you're, if you're playing along at home, shake your hands out because you're going to get start to get tired. Now, C major. We haven't done this yet. This is a bit harder because it's more of a stretch. And I don't want you to play the bottom string. You see how the bottom string has a cross? I don't want to hear that. You hear this a lot from even professional players. They play a C like this. Now that's fine if that's the chord you're going for because that's actually a C major slash E. And that means in the bass and the left hand on a piano or the bass player would play an E. So you get that third in the bass, the E. Sometimes you want that. For example, if you go into an F, you get a nice nice movement, right? But I don't want that in this song. I want C in the bass, and this is the C here. That's your ring finger on the third fret of the A string. Then you've got your middle finger on the second fret of the D string. And then you've got your first finger, or your pointer finger, on the first fret of the B string. You've also got the open G and C, which is indicated by the white dots on the screen. And the cross means don't play that string. So this is a bit trickier because what you're going to do is you're going to make sure those top five strings are sounding. But if you're going to strum, you're going to have to avoid the lower string. Now, I, I can't really do this, so check this out. If I want to get that low C here on my ring finger. Do you hear what I just did? I hit the low string. This hard to do. Now you can do this if you just finger pick quite easily. But if you're using a pick, I'm using a pick today, it's very hard to just miss that low string. So what I do is, one of my bad habits I talk about at times, is I put my thumb over the top of the guitar. So my hand is right wrapped around the neck of the guitar and my thumb is over the top. And what I'm effectively doing is just resting it on the string. You see, if you rest your hand on the strings and then play, you get what you call a mute. So I'm basically muting that string by just, but basically just resting the thumb on there. That's all I'm doing. So it doesn't sound. And that means I can strum all the strings. And that's exactly right. Now, like I said, this isn't the classical way. I don't want to encourage you to do this if you want to learn classical guitar, but for what I play, this works beautifully. So if I do that test again, muted. So this is a harder chord because you're muting the string or you're avoiding that low string. You can also mute it with this finger, which might be more um, kind of correct in the classical world because you can also do it like this. Though. If you rest that, that ring finger just right, I, I'm just so used to this way now. So this is C because this is your C note here. Sounds happy, so it's major. C major. So this one might take more work. This is harder than E minor. We've done E minor before. This is a bit harder than G, in my opinion. You're going to have to work at this chord. Now, remember, this is not a waste of time. These four chords will allow you to play thousands of songs. So do not, uh, you know, don't be afraid to put the work in now. This is really going to pay off. I could, I could show you. 10 songs right now that you can play with these same chords, whether it's just the intro or the whole song. So there's your C, and now I'm gonna go on to the final chord, you'll be happy to hear. This is D, and again it sounds happy, so it's D major. Now with this one, I find this slightly easier, but again, there's two strings I don't wanna hear. I don't wanna hear the low E, I don't wanna hear the low A, although A is part of a D chord, I want to hear the actual root note of a D chord, which is D. So I want to hear that D. I only want to hear the top four strings. I want the open D string. And then I want this, these ones here. I want your pointer finger on the second fret of the G string, which is an A. 
I want your ring finger on the third fret of the B string, which is your D. And I want your middle finger on the second fret of the highest E string, which is an F sharp. That's your major third. Same thing again. I'm, see, I do this. Now, maybe you can't do this. Maybe your hands aren't big enough, but I like to do this. I would honestly struggle to mute those strings any other way. Look. You can do it, but when I do this, I, it's so much easier. I can just hit everything. So you tell me, I'm learning from you guys too. You tell me how you do it. I know we've got some players here, like Jerry Cherry just came in. We've got very experienced players here. When you play an open D, what do you do? Do you do this? Because I want to say that's a ter terribly bad habit, and yet it just works so well for me. So you tell me what you do. Sometimes I'll actually play that fret this low F sharp as well. That gives you, again, a D slash F sharp in the bass. But on this song, I just want to hear those top four strings. And if you look back at the C, this is worth noting as well. It might help some people. Look at that C where the two open strings are on the high E and the open G string and where I'm fretting that first fret of the B string. You see that shape there? Well, that is, C to D is a whole step up. If you look at the D in comparison to that, you see, can I overlap them like this? Oh, that's too confusing. But you see, that is the same shape where we had two open strings, we're now fretting the two strings, and where we had this um, first fret on the B, we've now got the third fret on the B. So this C, the top half of that C, this might be too much for some, but you might see what I'm talking about. The C was like this, right? The top four strings were like this. Or top three strings were like this. Well, the D is basically that moved up plus this one. It's the same shape. So. If you can see that, if you can't see that yet, don't worry about it, but um, it might help you, help you start to put things together. Um, one more thing I wanted to say, some people like, like we do on the Monday sometimes, we take the open C shape and slide it up two frets, which is a really, really cool song, um, cool sound, I mean. So look, this is your C. Move the whole thing up two frets, one, two. Now, that isn't just an open D chord, but it's got such a beautiful sound. And in all honesty, in all honesty, some, for some people, that might be easier to do that. So you might want to use that in the song as well. If you're more advanced, I want you to try doing that because that's a really nice shape to use just to get a new sound. That's a nice substitution, but if you're a brand new beginner, I want you to practice this D shape, open D, because this is a really important chord to get, okay? And we're back again. So go through the G, the E minor, the C, and the D one by one. Do them individually. Do the G. Really work on just the G, then just the E minor, then just the C, then just the D, and then try to move between them. That's the next step. Okay, so if you're brand new, don't go to this step yet. Stay on the first step, which is fretting the shape, remembering the shape, fretting it cleanly. Once you feel you've got all that, once you feel you've got all that, I want you to strum the chord, count to four, and then go to the next chord. We're going to practice changing the chords. And for most people, I find this is the hardest thing to do. So a lot of people can, can get their hand. You've, you've seen like new beginners, right? Go for a G shape and do this. And then play it. But the problem is for a lot of people changing chords. You need to change from that to the E minor. And what you really want to do is think to yourself, what is actually changing? So on this chord to the E minor, well, these two fingers are coming away, right? So they just come off completely. And then these two here are doing this. So what's actually happening is, this finger is staying in the same place. So, so what, what do you got? This is a great way to think about it. 
I'm thinking I'm taking these two fingers off. I'm leaving the pointer there the whole time. And I'm moving the middle finger down below the pointer finger. If you can kind of break it down like that, it becomes less about kind of magic and more about practical ways of changing with, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, efficiency. Guitar playing is a lot about efficiency, right? So here's my G. One, two, three, four, E minor, two, three, four. And also think to yourself, like, don't wait for the last minute. As you've strummed that chord, start to think in your mind, where am I going next? And, or, and kind of plan ahead, right? It's like going for a drive. So one, two, okay, I'm gonna move that one down and take those two off. Okay, great. And then only practice that. Two, three, four, one. Yeah, Jim, that, Jim, that's the word, anchor fingers. This finger is the anchor, okay? That doesn't come off. And then from this G, these two fingers on the B and the E, they do come off. The anchor stays where it is. That will really help because look, if I take these two off and leave the anchor, I've almost got the E minor. I just need to add the middle finger below it. So what you don't want to do, I know I said it's a great test. I know I said it's great practice to do this when you're learning a new chord. So strum the chord and then take your hand away, give a wave and play it again. That is a great thing to be able to do. But when you're actually changing chords, you don't want to take your hand off. You want to keep fingers on the guitar where they're going to be on the next chord for efficiency. So once you've got that down and you can just play a G straight away and just play an E minor straight away very clean, you want to figure out which finger is going to be consistent between the changes. So it's ridiculous to be playing a song and do this. You don't want to do that. You don't, you don't, you don't play guitar like this, right? That's great practice when you're learning to fret a chord, but when you're actually playing in rhythm, you want the, the hand to be efficient and not moving much at all, so like this. It makes it easier to play, it makes everything much smoother as well. Yeah, Lewis, exactly. I told you, when you're learning a new shape, it's good practice to be able to do something like this. Hand off. Because you're forgetting where your hand was, right? And then you do it again. Hand off. Do it again. My point with doing that is learning a new chord, you're forcing yourself every time to go straight to that chord. That's great practice. But when you're actually putting a song together, you don't want to take your hand off the guitar. You want to move to the next shape. So Jerry's right, you get the ringing between the notes, see? And you get maximum efficiency. There's not much movement. That's what you're looking for, not much movement. So that's the G to the E minor. Now let's go on to the next one. The next one will be that C again. So now I'm gonna go, same thing, I'm gonna do that E minor to the C. So. You can do this yourself. You can think to yourself, well, what's going to what's going to change? What's going to stay the same? Well, the E minor to the C, now your middle finger is staying on that same note. Your middle finger isn't moving this time. So you're going to go from this E minor. You're going to pivot your hand around, leaving this middle finger on the E on the E note of the D string, and you're going to pr press like that. You see the movement? The ring finger comes up to the C, the third fret of the A string, and the pointer finger changes onto the first fret of the B string. And then for me, my thumb rests over the neck. So my whole hand position is changing. You see the way my hand is turning? So it's, like, it's just like a mechanism. So E minor, C. it's so efficient it's so fast to change that way and then you can cut since you can watch this again later and remember on YouTube you can watch in slow motion as well you can play things back slower or faster let's move on to the next one which will be the C to the D so I'll do the same thing again there's the C 
Okay. And then, oh, I made myself too big. Hang on. Now we're going to go to this D here. So what happens here? So again, work this out for yourself if you can. Let's see, right, we've got C, going up to a D. So what stays the same? Ah, nothing. Okay, well, nothing's staying the same, but what's going to happen in regards to changing then? Well, the third, the, the ring finger is coming down on the third fret still, but down to the B string. And then these two fingers here are making this kind of triangular shape. So everything's moving, but again, look, you can practice this while you watch the TV, okay? You see that? So there's nothing consistent on this change, but you can still get a feel for what's changing. And that's your, the actual position of my wrist now isn't moving, so that's easier in a way. But you've just got to find out and figure out in your mind like what's actually happening, and then over time you'll get the muscle memory as well to remember what's happening, right? So I'm going to go C, two, three, four, D, two, three, four. I just keep doing that. C, two, three, four, D, two, three, four. Again, C, two, three, four, and D, two. Okay. Right, Lewis said your finger set. So Lewis, you know, stop. Right, I'm doing the lesson. Ideally, this lesson, if we were doing a one-to-one, -one, would, would have been over by now. We would have just gone over the chord shapes. I would have said, learn those chord shapes, and then we'll come back next week, and we'll start moving on to the next part. But because this is, the, uh, pre uh, because this is a recorded lesson, you can stop now and just watch to the end and then pick up later on. Don't overdo it. I would say maybe take one day off a week, depending how you feel. I think the best thing to do is to practice 10 minutes a day every day and just take break down what I've said here into into parts which is what I'm trying which is what I'm doing. The first part of this lesson is how to tune the guitar, all right? The second the, the the main part of the lesson really is how to fret these chords. So just practice fretting the chords. So I this is a G. This is an E minor. This is a C. This is a D. And then the next thing to do, once you're sure you've got that, is to practice changing between them. Remember, I play all the time. I play for hours every day. My hands are used to this. This, this is like you wouldn't watch a, an hour gym instructional DVD as a brand new person to the gym and just do it, right? You, would, you might just do the first part, but you've got access to the whole thing. That's what I'm giving you here. I'm giving you access to the whole song in one video. Doesn't mean you have to do it all right now. Now, some people will do it, and that's another reason why I'm doing this. Some people that are really experienced might be at home either taking some ideas from the lesson or just practice. If I play the song, they might practice soloing over it or something. So you, you just have to be your own kind of teacher with this and manage your time for what feels right to you. If things hurt, you stop and you shake your hands out and you rest. If they don't hurt, you keep going a bit longer, and over time it will get better. But we're almost at the end of the lesson, so I want to keep going. Again, if you're at this level, if you know these chords, I want to show you the rhythm, because this is the last part, really. The rhythm of the song is important. Now, this is 119 beats per minute. I want you to always practice with a metronome. It's very, very important. The same way it's important to tune with a tuner, it's very important to practice with a metronome. This is called the Tempo app from the App Store, 119 beats per minute. And let me turn that off. Okay. One, two, you hear that loud beep? That's the first beat of the bar. One, two, three, four. One, two. So you want to practice this. Just the G chord, clean, tap your foot, move your body. One. Got to really get into that. Now, you could record this, listen back, think to yourself, am I really strumming on that first beat or am I a bit late or am I a bit early? This is really important stuff. And once you've got that, once you feel, yes, I've definitely got this now, then do the E minor. 
One, two, three. One, two, three. So I'm just strumming all the strings on the first beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Once you got that, move on to the C. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Once it's easy and you're getting bored of this, that means you're making great progress. Then the D. One, two, three, four. If this is too difficult, you can slow it down. This may be the original speed of the recording, but you can slow this down to 80, and then speed it up to 90, then 100, then 110, and then 119. Also, I'm talking while I play. That's great practice as well. If you find this really silly, stupidly easy, then can you hold a conversation while you're doing it and still playing in time? I just went out, see? Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Can you keep playing that while you talk? That will help when you want to sing over the top as well, because you're able to talk while you're playing. But again, don't go out and always record yourself if you're not sure, because that will tell you if you're going out or not. And then once you've got that, you could try changing, you can make little games, like you could just try changing every bar. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Once you got that, you could think, oh, I'll do every two. Ready? One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then once you've really got it, you could change every beat. One, two, three, four. Okay. Remember. This is all accelerated. This is not something you just sit down and do. This, this, this could be a month's worth of work or longer here. Right? I'm giving you everything in one. And the last step is to play the song, because that's why we're here, right? To learn a new song. So, this is a really cool groove on this song that you don't get in a lot of songs that you might play. So, I want you to do this. And this might take some real work. I do this, I go strum and I slap the strings. When I say slap the strings, I deaden all the strings with my right hand, and I give myself that sound. So I get this. And what that's giving you effectively is the sound of the drum. It's giving you the sound of the original recording, right? That dun, 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 dun. Now you can also learn, if you're really advanced, you can learn the bass line. And when we get into looping, you could play what I just played there with the chords. You could record that, and then you could play over the top. Now, if you've got a friend that plays the guitar, they could learn that bass line on the guitar or on the bass if they play bass. They could play that. That's fun when you jam with other people. So you could learn that, and then your friend could play the chords while you play the bum, 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 bum. bum. Okay, you hear that ringing? All acoustic guitars do that. When you do this, when you hit those dead, uh, like the muted chords, you get this sympathetic ring from behind the nut. And the way to fix that is to take a elastic band or they actually sell, um, I've got one down here, they sell them for the guitar and you put something around it and it kills that. And that's a really good idea, especially with a song like this, you don't want to hear that. Let me just try something. 
I can, because, because I've got headphones on, I can really hear it. It kind of annoys me actually. And if I was recording this for an album or even a YouTube video, that would really, really um, annoy me. So what you do is you just put something around here like this. You can get a proper theme for this, but check this out. Yeah, it's still doing it. It's not tight enough. So I, I have, I have, you've seen me use them in, in videos before. Something that goes over there and it completely, it basically presses down like this. So then you hear that? Dead. But without it, you hear those ding, ding, ding. That's not working. You need something to really um, press down. I think I have one here actually. I never used to use these, and then once I started doing YouTube videos, I could really hear it. And you might not, this is the kind of thing that once you hear it, you can't unhear it. And you might not even have a problem with it. But you, you can just get like, like a piece of foam like this. This is, this is not what I was looking for, but you just need something under there. A lot of electric guitar players use these. Once you hear it, you're not going to unhear it. So you see something like that is good because it just lives under the strings. Now check this out. It's completely gone, right? I don't know if you can hear that, but if you put, do me a favor, put headphones on, listen back to the video later, you'll really hear it. So now it's great, ready? Completely dead now in between the notes. So I don't know why guitar companies don't figure out a way to build that into the guitar somehow, because to me that just makes a huge, huge, huge difference, especially when you're using a microphone. And that's what I'm using today, I'm using the microphone. So you're really hearing it, right? So anyway, to play the song, you wanna get this. Strum, slap, strum, strum. So I'm... So I'm giving myself that kind of drum sound. Strum. And I'm also, if you're more of an advanced player too, I'm also kind of lifting up the fingers on these notes too. So I'm lift, I'm releasing the chord, just so you get some of the dead notes here, and I'm slapping it with my hand as well. I might even want to do that kind of rate sound as well. And remember, use the metronome. Use your metronome. Definitely use the metronome. Definitely tap your foot as well. It should make you want to move. keep thinking about something I want to say, I keep forgetting to say it. <laughs> oh yeah, remember this, the actual progression is G, 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 E minor, C, D, G. So the C and the D are half as long as the G, right? The G and the E minor. So one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, one, two, four, two, two, three. So you got two bars of G, two bars of E minor, one bar of C, one bar of D, two bars of G, and then you repeat the whole thing. And if you really want to um, get very fancy, like I said, learn this bass line. loop it. So one, two, three, four, that's one. A 
I'm also muting this as well. I'm not going... I'm, I'm muting it with the side of my hand. The muting on this old 60s, 50s stuff is what's... All right, very important. So, one, two, three, four. If you're using a loop pedal, remember, practice with a metronome, you want to hit that loop pedal on beat one. So one, two, three, four, record. Okay, one, two, three, four, one. One is when you press the record on the looper. One, two, three, four, one. You've got to stay in time for that looper. One, two, three, so use the metronome. That's where you hit it again. So if you haven't got your looper yet, just practice with the metronome because that will be so much easier then when you come to loop if your timing is good. And what would happen is that would then keep playing round and round and round and then over the top you would do your strum, slap, strum, slap, strum, slap, strum, slap, strum, strum, slap, strum. Okay, that's how you do it. You, that's super advanced. All right. So I'm again. I'm giving you the whole thing here, and then after that, it would be learning how to how to solo over that. Okay. I'm I'm trying I'm kind of giving you absolute beginner and intermediate here. We won't go we won't go over um, super advanced. I'm going to save that for when I do the looping lessons. So that's the whole thing. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play the song all the way through, and I invite you to jam along. If you're advanced, you can practice your soloing. If you're brand new, you can just strum one chord per bar. If you're really new, you can just watch me play it. Okay, just to get a feel for it. So I'm going to put my reverb back on and sing it to you. Happy Valentine's. I'll come back. If you've got any questions on what I'm doing, let me know, and I'll come back and address those before we say goodbye today. If you're new here, please subscribe and ring the bell. I really appreciate it. It really helps me out. And if you've got something from today's lesson, feel free to send a super chat or buy me a coffee. I'd really appreciate it. Like I said, this song will allow you to play thousands of songs, so you have to do it, right? You just... There is no waste of time with this. This is really, really, really useful stuff. I promise you, if you if you practice this really hard, you'll be able to play a bunch of other songs. I might show you at the end what I mean, but this is the song. See how I'm moving too? You want to move. Especially if the metronome is not on, because then you are the metronome, right? When the night has come And the land is dark And the moon is the only light we see I won't cry, I won't cry No, I won't shed a tear Just as long as you stay
did there naturally is I tried to build the chorus because it's so repetitive as the verse was like this When I got to the chorus I naturally wanted it to, to raise up a notch so rather than do that pattern I did this like full open chords And a bit louder too Dynamics are really important because if you just play the whole song the same way it will get really boring really quickly You could even do something like start with just the bass line stuff's really important that's not really another lesson but that's another video you know but that's basically um, dynamics and that's something that a lot of people also forget to do they forget dynamics and especially if you get on stage and you get nervous you tend to just play everything really loud and the same but it's really important like you can really bring someone in if you start a song like this so intimate right you bring people in and then you come in you can get closer and then once you get into the chorus you're, you're you're laying into it dynamics are so important they really deserve their own video but we'll try to add them as we go so just quickly just to give you some encouragement these chords are going to allow you to play all of the following songs. Wagon Wheel is the same chords in a different order. Wagon Wheel is G, D, E minor, C. So the rhythm is different, the chords are the same. So next week, if you've practiced this song a lot, we can do Wagon Wheel fairly easily. It's also Sweet Home Alabama. Now, Sweet Home Alabama does have that riff. Okay, but it's, if you're playing rhythm guitar, it's those three chords. There's no E minor, but you've got the big wheels keep on turning. So you've got the same chords, right? Uh, if we do Brown Eyed Girl, you're going to have the same G, C, G. There we go. You, if you practice this song next week, we could do Brown Eyed Girl, which has more chords, more of a complicated chord progression. But all the chords are the chords we learned today. Knocking on Heaven's Door, G, D, C. 
There is an A minor seven, but that's just a C without the ring finger. Um, heart of gold. E minor, C, D, G. <laughs> we got more. Feel free to tell me some more. Ring of fire. Da, 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 da. G, C, D. Da, 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 da. Okay, um, shallow is E minor, D, G, C, G, D. So shallow is pretty much, apart from the different picking pattern, the same chords. My point I'm trying to make here, Lewis, is this is, a, I've given you a lot of work today, but if you nail this song, if you nail Stand By Me, you can play at least, you know, at least 20 really famous songs over the top of that really easily. I'm completely giving away all my trick tools of the trade here. I shouldn't be doing this, right? Um, yeah, David, I, I mentioned that at the start of the video, some other songs too. David said, um, the monkeys is G, C, and D. It actually starts with an F. Okay, G, but you don't have to play that. That's actually played by the keyboard. A, G, D, G. So you got these from this week's song. G, D, and G. C, G. C, and G. C, and G. I saw her G, C, G, G, C, G. So, does, does that make sense, Lewis? You, you said earlier this song is hard to, is, is a challenge for you and a lot of work, but can you see what you'll get from the results of doing this? Um, look, um, I got another one, uh, Everybody Hurts, D to G. But you just have to pick the notes individually. Minor, so the E minor again. There is an A. But in all the songs I've just played, there's only been one or two chords that are different. These chords are so, they access so many songs. You've just got to change the rhythm. The actual, all this down here on the left hand, you can do so much with the basics. Yes, of course, later on we can do things like you know, we can do a jazzy chord, we can do big bar chords. We can do jazzy chord. We can do single note kind of stuff. Right, but the, the basics, the essentials, are all the same. Should I stay or should I go? D and G, right? Did we do those chords today? Yep. Same thing. Jerry says you should do D.A. Cole's whole set. Well, you can. I'm not being rude, Jerry. I, I'm, I, if anything, I'm being rude to myself. I'm giving away my tools and my trade, which is a terrible idea. I, I basically could play 30 or 40% of my song, my gig, right now using just these chords. Now, of course, I need new rhythms and I need to keep it interesting. And that's why I eventually we'll go into looping because that allows you then to make it interesting. But the actual bread and butter of what I do is really, really simple. And I think a lot of people don't know that. <laughs> so can I play, let me see, we got a friend D.A. Cole that writes songs, so I'm gonna take this even further. Look, he's got a song that goes, um, actually, oh yeah, so Red Light, Green Light, D.A. Cole. Now, just to be fair, just to be fair, like my songs, like. I'm happy and not sad, particularly down or glad. I'm somewhere in between. I'm not through red, black, or green. So 
same thing, right? I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to give enthusiasm and encouragement. This lesson is probably the most important guitar lesson a lot of people will ever have, because although they'll be thinking, well, what's a tuner? What's a capo? How do I tune? I might struggle tuning. But once you've got the tuning and this idea of time and these basic open chords down, you can do so much with it that I think that will encourage people to do more. Like, like it'd be interesting seeing how Lewis um, does with this. Like, if Lewis can learn Stand By Me this week and get it down 100%, and then next week we do another song, he's going to get that next song so quickly that he, and he'll be flying. And then he'll find songs online and he'll think, oh, hang on. He'll think that song is E minor to D. Well, I know those chords. Uh, the One I Love by R.E.M. This one goes out to the one I love. E minor to D. Now, he's going to have to learn that new strumming pattern, but the chords are already done. He did them this week. This one goes out to the one I left behind. Oh, the next chord is, is a C. Oh, well, we just did C today. Another prop G. Well, we did that today. D. We did that today too. And he might <laughs> I gotta stop. All I'm doing here is showing how ridiculously easy this music thing is, Jerry. Now it's not that easy because people like Jerry are soloing and playing jazz, and that's where the real work comes in. So don't don't think that this is it, all right? But this is a great place to start. This will get you playing a bunch of famous songs. To be honest with you, with guitar, it's that next step that's hard. It's been the next step that's hard for me as a musician. One reason I went from piano to guitar is that I suddenly saw how much easier it was. The piano took me so much work to learn. And then the guitar, I thought, well, this is great. I can just strum these chords and sing popular songs and really enjoy myself on stage. But what I found um, challenging is that next step. How do you go from this... to looping and then knowing where to move on the neck, knowing how to do right, that kind of stuff. And then beyond that, how to solo in, in and do like fast shredding or that kind of stuff. So that's the um, and then finger style, right? So I, I just want to make point out that what we're doing here is, I'm not saying that this is all easy and anyone can do it. I'm saying anyone can get into this and do some cool songs. And then hopefully that will propel you onto that next step. And getting to that next step is where the real work comes in. Right? Everyone should be able to do this, these basic songs. And it's, I think that's very encouraging. All right. So Lee's here. Lee's busy today. That's finally. Um, great thing with these live streams is they stay online. So people can watch these anytime. Lewis is excited. Well, if you're not excited, then you shouldn't be here, right? Because if you're not excited to play the guitar, then you should just not do it. <laughs> so I'm glad you're excited. Um, Jerry says, train a new generation of DA guitar players. And then, you know, some stuff DA does is more challenging. Like, he'll do the songs um, like the... Uh, songs with riffs in and I find it hard to like, like, like I'm struggling now I find it hard to remember those riffs right or all that kind of stuff is obviously harder right let me just play that because I messed up uh, is that right So that's obviously a lot harder than what we're doing today. But we could do songs like that as well down the line. From me. Uh, that, that sometimes that's harder when you play songs that are really easy at a gig and then you, a song comes along with like a riff in it that's harder because you're so, or well, I'm speaking for myself, but I'm so like in that frame of mind of, oh, this, this, I know this, I know this. And then when something comes along, you've got to actually remember that. It's like going back to the beginning again because you've, you're not just relying on muscle memory anymore. You've got to practice stuff so much that it's in the muscle memory. It's just like last week on the on the on the concert I did. Um, uh, right. So 
was something like that intro. I'd have to do this, the way Lewis is practicing his E minor right now, I'd have to sit and practice that. So whenever I go to play that, I get it right every time, I don't do this. There's nothing worse, right, you're on stage. Every time, you, it, well, that wants to be muscle memory. As much as this is muscle memory. And with, I think with the guitar, a lot of it is just muscle memory, the whole thing. Um, I won't waste my money on that Martin 10 years from now, because I can't, I can only, I can play songs thanks to Aaron Short's music. When you're buying a Martin, that's investing. On tomorrow night's show, can you play, feel, feel, can you please play, can you feel the love tonight? I guess tomorrow night we've got to do lots of um, romantic songs, unfortunately, right? There's a calm surrender to the rush of day when the rolling world getting away. Yeah, I have to practice it. What's the point of a Ferrari if it's just a garage queen? <laughs> Don't know, Lewis, I haven't got a Ferrari. I'm your captain, yeah. Do 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 do. Because you're going from strumming chords the whole time. I, I don't. I don't think that's even right. But that's the other tip for today. Don't learn stuff from memory. Like, make sure you actually learn the right notes from the recording. Because once you learn something wrong, it's very hard to unlearn it. All right, Lewis, I want to see you playing Stand By Me on your channel this week. That's your goal. There we go. Intros of Ventura Highway. So something like that is more, much more advanced. Oh my god, I need to play that. i got to practice it for tomorrow. I'm glad I'm picking up the guitar. Thanks to you instead of looking at guitars and sniffing. Well, that's important too. Don't get me wrong. This one smells pretty good. No, you know, I think it's all equally as important for me. For me. I speak for myself. The gear is important. I love the gear itself, like the microphones and the pedals. I find all that really fun. I like playing the music. I'd say playing the music for me is the biggest challenge, and that's why I never get bored of it, because it's always a challenge, and the most rewarding, of course. And I'm liking this new balance on the channel of Monday just really getting into the nitty gritty of what makes an acoustic guitar sound the way it does. Wednesday talking about what gear we should use at our shows. Saturday learning the songs and hopefully over time I can show you how actually how I would play songs at a gig as well. Like rather than just teach you a song like for the, 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 the beginner song, I would like to um, set up the rig that I use at my shows and show you how I play certain parts. And then Sunday, just play the songs. Yep, Jim. So in the description below on YouTube, I put a link to the original recording. Remember, it's in A, so you want to get your capo. I like the G7 capos. You want to put that on the second fret if you're going to play along to that, all right? Or you can come back to this video. The start of the, sh of the show today, I played the song through. So you can just play along to me playing it on here in G. I did G because it's easier, I feel. We could always come back to this in a few weeks and do it in the original key without the capo. That will mean we're playing a bar chord. And for a lot of people, going from open chords to bar chords is a big step as well. So we'll save that for another time. All right. I'm very tired too. Lewis, it's not just you. I'm tired too. I'm pretty mentally exhausted from teaching the song. You want to just, this video we saved, you want to just go and take a break now for the day. Come back tomorrow with fresh ears and fresh hands and play through part of this video until you got it and then move on. This is a week's worth of a, of a lesson here in one video, okay? So yeah, uh, Jim, just go to, if you go, if you're on your phone, I'm not sure how you're watching this, but if you're on your phone, for example, and you come to this video, go to, the chat is on the screen, so you have to X out of the chat, which is on the right side, and then, you have to tap on where it says live song lesson and playthrough, stand by me. You can tap on that and it brings up all the details of the video. And in there it says, if you want to support me, blah, blah, blah. Here are my affiliate links. Here's the guitar that I'm playing. And here's a link to the song. If you tap on the link to the song, 
then there's the song right there. All right, so yeah, not just you, Lewis. I'm very tired too. This is a lot of, of information to take in. And even if you're an advanced player, to sit and practice this with a metronome is a challenge. And it's something that we should all do to get better. So I'm going to end things here. Charlie, good to see you. I'm going to have to end things now. And I'm going to go and practice for tomorrow's stream. Tomorrow is 4 p.m. EST playing the cover songs. I'll do a lot of Valentine's Day songs tomorrow. So get your dedications ready. Marianne, thank you. Um, thank you, S. Willis. Thanks, Rosanna. Yeah, everyone have a great evening. I'll be back tomorrow, 4 p.m. EST for the concert. I'll see you then. Go and do some more practice if you can. And if not, try to do some throughout the week. And then next week, it'd be great to hear from you how you did with this song. Feel free to record it on your YouTube channel and tag me in it as well. I'd like to see that. Or send me a video to say hi at erinshortmusic.com. That'd be great. Jerry, good to see you, buddy. Have a great night. Say, tell DA I said hi, and I'll see you later. I'll see everyone later. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow, 4 p.m. EST. Take care. Bye-bye. Sweet.